boys and girls, welcome to our EVS class. Today we are going to look at Unit 3, Animal Kingdom. It is a long but interesting chapter. So without any ado, let's dive in. Look at the world around you. Our world is rich with a variety of living things. Broadly, living things can be categorized as plant kingdom or animal kingdom. And today's focus is animal kingdom, which includes animals, birds, and insects. Have you noticed that most animals live in groups? Can you guess why? Firstly, if they live in groups, it's easier to get food, water, and shelter. Secondly, it's easier to protect their families from enemies. And thirdly, it is easier on them to raise their young ones. So most animals tend to live in groups. There are special names for different kinds of groups of animals. I'll give you an example. A group of ants is called a colony of ants. A group of bees is called a swarm of bees. Let's look at the other names. A herd of cows, a pack of wolves, a pride of lions, a flock of birds, a school of kids, no, a school of fish. Some are even stranger. A group of crows is called a murder of crows. Sounds dangerous. An army of caterpillars, a parliament of owls. You can find more such terms from your additional reading. Now let's learn about different classifications of animals. Based on the general behavior of animals, there can be four different types. Shy animals, friendly animals, social animals, and mutual helpers. Let's go through each of them. One, shy animals. These are animals that are too shy or scared to come near us. They hide in their shells or they run away from us or any larger animal they come across. Can you think of some shy animals? Tortoises and snails, they hide in their shells. Earthworms, lizards, rabbits, squirrels, birds and most insects fall into this category. The second category is friendly animals. Yes, these are friendly to us. They can be easily tamed. The examples are cats, dogs, cows, horses and even dolphins. Dolphins are rare pets, but they are very friendly animals. The third category is social animals. These animals live in large groups or colonies. Ants and bees are perfect examples for these. These colonies are highly organized and disciplined with a queen ant or a bee, males and workers. The wise King Solomon is said to have mentioned that we should look at an ant and learn. Ants are very wise and diligent when it comes to their work. I think that's some good advice for all of us. Coming to the fourth category, they are called mutual helpers. These animals are in a relationship with other animals and they help each other in some way. I'll give you three examples. One is cattle egrets. These are small birds that live near the cattle. They perch on the back of cows, buffaloes, or even elephants and eat up all the insects on their bodies. How do they help each other? The birds feed on the insects and they are full and the bigger animals are insect free. They are not bothered by the insects. So it works for both of them. The second such example is Egyptian plovers and crocodiles. You know what these little birds do? They feed on the meat particles that are stuck in between the teeth of the crocodiles. Sounds gross, but not for these birds. They are happy feeding on the decayed meat particles and the crocodiles. They don't ever have to take a dentist appointment. They are very happy with their clean teeth. This is how they help each other. They are mutual helpers. The third example I want to give you is oxpeckers and rhinos. 
Again, these are little birds that perch on the back of the rhinos and eat up all the ticks and the insects. The rhinos are clean and the birds are full. They help each other. They are also mutual helpers. Let's learn about two important aspects of animals, migration and hibernation. What is migration? Migration is when a group of animals move to a different location in search of food or better weather conditions. I'll give you an example. Siberian cranes from Siberia or Russia move to tropical regions like India and that's called migration. They do that in search of a milder winter. Now hibernation. Hibernation is when an animal sleeps through the months of winter and remains totally inactive. An example would be polar bear. They sleep for months together in winter. So if your friend teases you saying, have you been hibernating? You know what that means. Animals can be classified into various groups based on their habitats. What are habitats? Habitats are natural surroundings or environment in which an animal lives. In order to live in a particular habitat, an animal has to have certain special features. These special features are called adaptations. I'll give you an example. Take a fish. A fish lives in water, that is its habitat. What are the special features the fish has in order to live in water? It could be the streamlined shape of the body, it could be the fins or the scales, or it could be even the gills that they use to breathe. So these are adaptations. How do we classify animals based on their habitats? Broadly speaking, based on the kinds of habitats, we can classify the animals into these groups. Terrestrial animals, aquatic animals, amphibians, arboreal animals, and aerial animals. Let's look at terrestrial animals. Terrestrial animals are those animals that live on land. Their habitat is land. So they have specific adaptations that suit animals to live on land. Examples are lungs to breathe, legs and feet to walk and run on land. The adaptations of terrestrial animals can also be based on where exactly on the land they live. If an animal is living in a hot desert, it will have a certain adaptation as against an animal that is living in a cold condition. An animal that is feeding on only plants or herbivores will have certain adaptations and the animals that feed on animals called carnivores will have certain other adaptations. I'll give you a few examples. A camel. A camel lives in a hot desert and it has an adaptation called a hump which stores water and fat. Take a polar bear that lives in a very cold condition in the polar regions. It has very thick fur. Now that is an adaptation a polar bear has. Now let's look at a carnivore, a flesh-eating animal. They have very sharp teeth. Now that's an adaptation that is suiting to that animal. There is a lot of scope for research in this area. You can read up on books and articles or on the internet and find out more adaptations of terrestrial animals. The second category of animals based on habitat is aquatic animals. These are animals that live in water. Their habitat is water. What is the example that comes to mind? Fish. We already learned about the different adaptations that fish has in order to live in water, like gills for breathing. Do you know that whales and dolphins, though they live in water, they don't have gills. They have lungs instead, just like us. So how do they breathe in water? They don't. 
every once in a while they come up to the surface of the water to take in a large breath and then they go back into the water. Interesting. The third category that is based on habitat is amphibians. Animals like tortoises and frogs, they live both in water and on land. These are amphibians. Their adaptations include having both lungs and gills to breathe. So on land, they breathe with their lungs and in water, they breathe with their gills. The fourth category of animals based on habitat is arboreal animals. These are animals that live on trees. Can you think of an example? Monkeys. Now what are the adaptations monkeys have in order to live on trees? Their long tails and long limbs enable them to climb the trees and also to swing from one tree to another. The last category of animals based on habitats is aerial animals. These are animals that are able to fly like most birds. Can you think of some adaptations for these animals? These animals have light bodies and they also have hollow bones that are filled with air that help them to fly. We learnt about the types of animals based on general behaviour. Shy animals, friendly animals, social animals, mutual helpers. We also learnt about migration and hibernation. Then we learnt about classification of animals based on habitats. Terrestrial, aquatic, amphibian, arboreal and aerial animals. We also discussed the adaptations for all these animals. That's all for this unit. See you later. Bye-bye.